Oh, can you believe it? It's July in the Cairngorms and it's snowing. But it's perfect weather to show you what might happen if one of your bits of equipment failed you. Take, for example, a rucksack. Well, you might say it's easy. You take your kit, throw it in your tent, put it over your shoulder. But I've been doing that for the last hour or so and I can tell you it's no joke. One slip and you could fall and kill yourself. The smart thing to do is to stop, find somewhere where there's some materials to make yourself a decent one. And that's what we're going to do. This is what we need though, willow. To make a rucksack frame, we need some wood and we need something to tie it together with. And the willow is going to provide both of those things. Bend the wood so that the fibres are stretched and then cut in like this. You cut them off real cleanly, they'll grow back. You're going to need three pieces for the rucksack, make an A-frame shape. Don't want to damage the bark though, because the bark we can turn into string. First thing though, is we have to take off the outer bark, the green part. To do that we'll just scrape it off. What we do now, we'll run the knife down the bark. Now. We can just pull that straight off, like that. And this, we can, it's very strong. We can use this to make string to tie the rucksack together. I'll clean the other bits, it'll take a few minutes. This is what I'm looking for, pine and birch woodland. See, I've got a root here, it's about maybe just over two metres long. You have to be careful not to tug on the roots as you're pulling them up, because they're a bit brittle when they're fresh. So you just follow them along and dig them up carefully. If they were all as good as this one, you could make a good, good pair of rucksack straps with about 12. Right, well we're going to make an A-frame rucksack. I've done a little bit of work already. I've carved the willow sticks two of them to an arm's length and one of them is from my elbow to my fingertips. Before we tie it all together though, we should make the straps and for that we'll use those roots. What we're going to do is plait them together with a three strand plait, just like girls do to their hair. We're going to use willow bark to tie the rucksack together. Take the two long ones and near the top lash them together. The straps must be attached really strongly, so I'm going to use a root and bark for that job. At the ends of the rucksack straps, I form the roots into an eye. And all I have to do now is to slot that onto the bottom of the sack. And it's finished, ready for the load. OK, so we've made our frame. And we need something, though, to tie things onto the frame with. And the old stinging nettle is going to be the answer. If you handle a stingy nettle right, it won't sting you. You've got to be bold. If you're too timid with a nettle, it'll sting you badly. Now, we've got to strip this of all the stings and all the leaves. And if we do it quickly and in this direction, they won't hurt. I'm not stung, believe it or not. Now, flatten the nettle between your hands. Now, take the nettle in the middle, bend it in half, and push so that the pith separates from the fibres. Put your thumbnail on top and pull and away comes the pith. These fibres are really strong and we can use those to make good string. Take one of them, put it on your thigh and round it off by rolling it away from you. Bend it in half. Grasp the bit that's bent. Grasp it here with your left hand and with the palm of your right hand roll both of these pieces away from you and we start to get string. Do you remember this? Well, now's the acid test. We've got our stinging nettle cord and we'll tie it on. There we go. All I have to do is attach the strap and we're ready. And I'll see you soon. Have you ever been lost in a forest? I bet you have. Well, today I'm going to show you how to get out of the woods if you haven't got a compass. And these guys are the guinea pigs. I've brought the film crew deep into the forest and got them lost. 
Okay, guys, stop there. Well, we've got a map, we haven't got a compass. Here, in this green area, is where we are, somewhere in there. And down here is a car park where the crew left their car. And we've got to get there. So how do we do it? How do we find south? Well, nature herself is going to show us. Come with me, I'll show you. Now, guys, look, this is the first lesson. The irony is, it's the trees themselves that are going to help us get out of here. Look, on this side of the tree, the branches are thick, strong, and reaching horizontally out for the warmth. That is the south side of the tree. On this side of the tree, the branches are fewer, thinner, and they tend to reach more upwards. That's the northerly side of the tree. Now, of course, not all trees do this. We've got to make sure that we take an average of, say, six or eight trees. Anyway, this one's good. That's the way we've got to go. Let's go. Here's a good tip. The sun's out, and that can really help us find our way about. Take your watch off, point the hour hand at the sun, then Halve the distance between the hour hand and 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock during British summertime, and it'll be there, and that'll point south. Of course, it's a bit difficult if you wear a digital watch. Here's a tip for remote places. Put a stick in the ground straight up and mark the end of the shadow. Now, the sun moves constantly from east to west, so in a few hours' time, that shadow will have moved. Mark the end of the new shadow, say there, and construct an imaginary line between the two. At 90 degrees to that line, towards the sun, will be south. To stay on course, any course, you need to be able to fix your gaze on a point and walk to it. But what happens when you come to thick bushes like this? Inevitably, in avoiding places like this, you start to wander off and can end up walking around in circles. Now, there's a little technique from Scandinavia that'll help us, the pole. You take a long pole, as long as possible. You can use it like a giant needle and thread it through the bushes where only the needle can go. Now, now we can walk around and pick that stick up because it's long and straight, it'll keep us on course. So even if I have to go around the bushes, the pole can go through them and keep me on a true course. I could hit cars. Could be we're close to the car park, eh? There's a good indicator. Stumps like this can be excellent for pointing us in the right direction. There's the centre, and the centre will be nearest the edge on the southerly side, and that would be about right. OK, let's go. There are guys. One crew van. How about that? I'll be seeing you. Take care. See you around. See you. July in the Cairngorms, and it's snowing. But it's perfect weather to show you what might happen if one of your bits of equipment failed you. Take, for example, a rucksack. Well, you might say it's easy. You take your kit, throw it in your tent, put it over your shoulder. But I've been doing that for the last hour or so, and I can tell you, it's no joke. One slip, and you could fall and kill yourself. The smart thing to do is to stop, find somewhere where there's some materials to make yourself a decent one. And that's what we're going to do. This is...